Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Lesson 6, More Work with Parallel Lines. We do a lot of geometry in Math 8 and a big, big fundamental aspect of geometry or concept in geometry is that of parallel lines. There's a lot of terminology that goes along with it as well as a lot of just sort of math facts. So today what we're going to be doing is reviewing a little bit of what we saw in the last lesson on parallel lines, plus we're going to be introducing some new terminology amongst the angles that are created with parallel lines as well as relationships that those angles have with one another. So without further ado, let's get into it in the first exercise where we review some important facts about what are known as corresponding angles. All right, a look at corresponding angles, exercise number one. In the diagram below, line M is parallel to line N. In symbols, we would say M parallel to N. They are crossed by transversal line T, creating the eight numbered angles below. In letter A, it says angles located in the same relative position on the two parallel lines are known as corresponding angles. Fill in the following. All right, so let's talk about this. Um, probably of all types of angles that are formed by parallel lines, corresponding angles are the most important. And here's what I mean by corresponding angles, right? When we have these two parallel lines, M and N, and they're crossed by that third line, T, right? It creates four angles up here and four angles down here. Angles that are in the same relative position on the two parallel lines crossed by the transversal correspond. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. Right, if we look at angle one up here, you could think of that, that as being sort of the upper left-hand angle of the four, one, two, three, four, that are created. That then corresponds down here to angle six. It is also the upper left-hand angle that's created amongst those four. So I would say that angle one corresponds to angle six. All right, let me get rid of that. What I'd like you to do is take a moment and see if you can figure out what angles correspond to 2, 3, and 4 in terms of 5, 6, 7, and 8. Pause the video now and go ahead and fill those out. All right, well this is pretty simple, right? Angle 2, which is up here, corresponds to angle 8, which is down here. So angle 2 corresponds to angle 8. Angle 3, which is sort of lower right hand, corresponds to angle 7, lower right hand. And of course that leaves us with angle 4 here corresponding to angle 5 down here. By the way, in all the problems today, I tried to sort of number the angles in the two parallel lines kind of in different ways so you didn't fall into any weird sort of patterns like one corresponds with 5, two corresponds with 6, etc. All right. Now let's talk about something that is extremely important about corresponding angles. Basically, this is almost the definition of corresponding angles. Let's take a look at that in letter B. What is true about the measures of corresponding angles? All right, well the plain fact is if we look at an angle like angle one and angle six, right, those two angles which correspond have the same measures. If angle 1 is 120, angle 6 is 120. If angle 1 is 170, angle 6 is 170. Corresponding angles have equal measures. So if I took out a protractor and measured those two angles, the degree measurement would be the same. Now we can use that fact in letter C, which says, if the measure of angle 1 is 110 degrees, then write the measures of all other angles on the diagram. All right, so this is kind of cool, right? Because we can say, well, all right, angle 1 is 110. So, you know, maybe I, I come over here and I write 110 degrees. Now, I can literally use that to fill out every other angle in the picture. One thing I could do immediately is I could say, well, if angle 1 is 110, then angle 6 must be 110 because they're corresponding angles. All right. But then I can use a fact about supplementary angles, right? Angles that add up to 180 to say, well, 1 and 2 create a straight angle, a 180 degree rotation, and therefore angle 2 must be 180 minus angle 1, so angle 2 must be 70 degrees. But of course, if I know that angle 2 is 70, I can say the corresponding angle down here is also 70 degrees. 
Now I can fill in the rest quite quickly, either by doing the supplementary angle here, or by, by realizing something that we saw in an earlier lesson, which is that vertical angles also have equal measures. Like angle one and angle three are vertical angles, and therefore if angle one is 110, angle three is 110. Now this diagram is going to get a little bit crowded. Angle four would be 70, and now I can fill in all the rest of my angles. It's kind of cool, really, and it, it illustrates a point that we saw in the last lesson, which is when two parallel lines are crossed by a transversal, eight angles are created. Of those eight angles, typically, four of them are obtuse and four of them are acute. The four that are obtuse all have the same measure, and the four that are acute all have the same measure, right? We got four 110s up here, and we have four 70s up here. The only exception to that rule would be if one of the angles was 90, then all of the angles would be 90. We'll look at that in a little bit. All right, so let's move on and talk about other angle pairs that are important besides corresponding angles. Now, there is a lot of terminology associated with parallel lines and the angles that are formed by parallel lines. What you want to do with any terminology in math is as much as possible, you want to make sense of it. Okay? So one thing we talk about with parallel lines are angles that are on the inside of the parallel lines. Those are known as interior angles. And angles that are on the outside of the parallel lines, those are known as exterior angles. And that's what exercise two is all about. So let me read through that for you briefly. When eight angles are formed, four of them lie inside the parallel lines, called interior. Four of them lie outside of the parallel lines, called exterior. Obviously what I just went over. In letter A, it asks us to name all of the interior angles from the above diagram, although we're going to look at the diagram below. And in letter B, we want to name all of the exterior angles from the above diagram. So I just keep repeating this diagram over and over for you, all right? But it's really simple, right? We've got these two parallel lines. There are angles that are formed inside the parallel lines, and then there are angles that are formed outside the parallel lines. Pause the video now and see if you can write down which angles are on the inside, called interior angles, and which angles are on the outside, called exterior angles. All right, that's easy enough. Just name the ones that are inside the parallel lines and you have the interior angles. Those would be angle three, angle four, angle six, and angle eight. Maybe make that look a little more like an angle marking. Now, of course, to name the exterior angles, we're just gonna name the ones that are outside the parallel lines. So those would be angle one, angle two, angle five, and angle seven. Right, and they're great names, interior angles, exterior angles. Now, the other piece that we're gonna get into in the next problem are whether or not angles are on the same side of the transversal, or whether they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So let's take a look at exercise number three. Angles can either be on the same side of the transversal or on alternating sides of the transversal. Referring to the diagram above, do the following. All right, so let's talk about this, right? Because again, you don't want to make the terminology worse than it is. Letter A asks us to name two pairs of alternate interior angles, meaning that the angles should be on the inside, interior, and they should alternate. They should be on opposite sides of the transversal. So the interior angles are three, four, six, and eight. Well, if we look at angle four, right, which is interior, what angle is on the opposite side or alternate side? Well, that's gonna be angle eight. Now you might say, well, angle three is also alternate side. But when we're talking about alternate interior angles, we're talking about comparing these four with these four. We're trying to pair up these four angles with these four angles, just like we did with corresponding angles. So the alternate interior angle to four would be eight. So angle four and angle eight are an alternate interior pair. Angle four and angle eight would be an alternate interior pair. But what would be the other alternate interior pair? Pause the video now and write it down. Ah, simple enough, right? So we look at angle three, it's interior, and the one that's alternate to that is angle six. 
angle three and angle six are interior, but they're on alternate sides of the transversal. So angle three and angle six. There we go. All right, let's take a look at letter B. Letter B says, name two pairs of same side interior angles. Same idea, right? We want interior angle pairs, but ones that lie on the same side of the transversal. And again, taking a look at angle three, which is an interior angle, the one that's also interior that lies on the same side is angle eight. So angle three and angle eight are same side interior angles. And I'd like you to do the same thing that we did before. Pause the video really quickly and write down the other same side interior pair. All right, simple enough. It's angle four and angle six. My board's being feisty this morning. Sometimes it's writing, sometimes it's not. Now, we can do exactly the same thing we did in this particular, in, in A and B, except we can talk about the exterior angles, the angles that are on the outside of the parallel lines. So what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and try to do both C and D. You're gonna be listing two pairs in both cases, all right, just like we did in A and B. Look at the terminology and see if you can figure out what angle pairs that terminology is referring to. All right, simple enough. I'd like to name two pairs of alternate exterior angles. So I pick an exterior angle, like angle one. Well, what angle is exterior and on the alternate side of it over here? Well, that would be angle seven. So angle one and angle seven are exterior angles on opposite sides of the transversal. So angle one, and angle seven, and then also angle two and angle five. Those are alternate interior, uh, ex exterior, sorry, angle pairs. Letter D, name two pairs of same side exterior. Again, all I have to do is grab an angle like angle two, right? It's exterior. The one that's on the same side of it down here is angle seven. So angle two and angle seven. Likewise, if I go to angle one, the one that's on the same side that's exterior is angle five. All right. Wow, right? So we've got corresponding angles. That's pretty easy. Then we have interior angles, exterior angles, same side angles, alternate side angles, and then we kind of combine them all together to get these alternate interior angle pairs, alternate exterior, same side interior, same side exterior. Let's see now in the next exercise the kind of relationships that start to build between these angle pairs. All right, various angle pair relations. Let's take a look at exercise number four. In the diagram shown, parallel lines R and S are crossed by N. The measure of angle one is 130 degrees. Letter A asks us, what angle corresponds to angle one? Fill its measure in. All right, well the first thing let's do just really quickly is here, let's write down that angle one is 130 degrees. All right, that's simple enough. In letter A, what angle corresponds to angle one? Fill its measure in. Pause the video really quickly and go ahead and do this. All right, simple enough. Angle one corresponds to angle seven. And since we know corresponding angles have the same measure, angle seven is also 130 degrees. Now, in letter B, we're asked to fill in all other measures using vertical angle pairs, right, and supplementary angles. So this is very similar to what we did in exercise number one. I'd like you to pause the video now and fill in every other angle that's sitting in this diagram. Go ahead and do that now. All right, well, I love going with the vertical angle pairs first because they're so, so easy, right? If angle one is 130, angle three, which is a vertical angle paired to it, must also be 130 degrees. Likewise, angle five must be 130 degrees. Now, we know that angle two, 
must be supplementary to angle 1 because they create the straight angle. So 180 minus 130 leaves us with angle 2 being 50 degrees. Then angle 4, which is vertical to that, is also 50 degrees. And we can then fill in all of these using corresponding angles or supplementary angles um, as 50 degrees as well. All right, sorry about how busy the diagram gets after a while, but we've got all those angle pairs. Let's now move on and start to look at those relationships in the angle pairs. So letter C states the following. List the two pairs of alternate interior angles below along with their measures. Then it also asks us to state what is true about the measures of alternate interior angle pairs. All right, so I'd like you to pause the video now, write down an angle pair that's alternate interior, write down the two measures, write down another angle pair that's alternate interior, and write down their two measures, and then try to answer this question about what is true about the measures of alternate interior angle pairs. Go ahead and do that now. All right, well, let's start with angle three. Angle three and angle seven are alternate interior angle pairs. They're interior, they're on opposite sides, right? So they're alternate interior. So angle three and angle seven, the measure of angle three is 130 degrees and the measure of angle seven is 130 degrees. The other pair of alternate interior angles are angle two and angle eight. And angle two is 50 degrees and angle eight is 50 degrees. So it appears that um, the measures of alternate interior angle pairs um, are equal, right? The measures of alternate interior angle pairs are equal. Awesome, right? I put this in the completely wrong place. <laughs> I'm seeing this now. Um, there we go. And maybe here. I love the ability to move my writing. It's great. There we go. All right, now it's all in the right place on the worksheet. Excellent. Okay, let's also take a look at letter D. Here, it asks us to list the two pairs of same side interior angles below along with their measures and also ask ourselves or answer the question, what is true about the measures of the same side interior angle pairs? All right, so just like before, what I'd like you to do so I'd like you to pause the video, write down the two pairs of same side interior angle pairs, write down their measures, and then think about what the relationship is between their measures. Go ahead and do that now. All right, let's do it. Well, first off, let's grab this um, same side interior angle pair, angle pair two and seven, our same side interior. All right, let me do a little dividing line here. So angle two, and angle 7. Angle 2 is 50 degrees and angle 7 is 130 degrees. That's one pair. The other pair is going to be angle 3 and angle 8. Angle 3 is 130 degrees. Angle 8 is 50 degrees. Now unlike alternate interior pairs, same side interior pairs are clearly not equal, right? 50 doesn't equal 130. But what is certainly true about these angle pairs is that they add up to 180 degrees, and they always will. So they add or sum to 180 degrees, meaning, of course, that the angles are supplementary. Oh, come on, fit. Oh, there we go. Right, the angle pairs are supplementary. Same side interior pairs will add up to 180. They're supplementary angles. Now let's answer one more question about all of this in exercise number five. Do exterior angle pairs show the same pattern as the interior angle pairs explain? All right, so let me bring up the diagram so that we don't have to keep going back up there to look at it. Right, what I've done is I've highlighted the exterior angle pairs here in blue. The question is, do they show the same pattern that the interior angle pairs showed? Pause the video now and give that some thought. And the answer is absolutely yes. All right, big resounding yes. And what do I mean by yes? You know, what do I mean? Well, that's where the explanation comes in. 
And what I mean by yes is that if I look at an alternate exterior angle pair, like four and six, I find that their measures are equal. Same thing with one and five, their measures are equal. Also, if I look at a same side exterior pair, like one and six, I see that their angles add up to 180, they're supplementary angles. So I'm gonna say yes, and my explanation is alternate angle pairs have equal measures same side pairs add to 180 degrees. And this is kind of nice, right? We don't have to memorize one thing for pairs of angles that occur on the interior of the parallel lines and a second fact for those that go on the exterior of the parallel lines. We know that angles that are formed, you know, if we compare these four to these four, that are on alternate sides, then they're going to have equal measures. If they're on the same side, they're gonna have measures that are supplementary. Let's do one more problem to kind of test this idea. Final problem, exercise number six. In the diagram shown, M is parallel to N. Find the value of X algebraically, show the work that leads to your answer. All right, so this is great. We're trying to solve for x, right? This is sort of like an applied algebra problem, but the context is geometry. So here's the real question. When I look at this angle, and I look at this angle, what is their relationship? What kind of angle pair are they? Are, is that angle pair then equal in measure, or does that angle pair add up to 180? One of those two is going to allow us to set up an equation and solve for x properly. I'd like you to pause the video and figure out which. All right, well, just to be clear, these are same side interior pairs, right? And because they're same side interior pairs, they add to 180 degrees. And that means I can take 4x minus 6, I can add it to 12x minus 38, and I can set all of that equal to 180 degrees. I can then do some combining of like terms, 4x and 12x is 16x, negative 6 and negative 38 is negative 44, and now I have a pretty easy two-step equation to solve. I'll add 44 to both sides. Of course, you know, you should definitely have your calculator handy if you don't want to do kind of all of this longhand. I'll get 16x equals 224. Divide both sides by 16. And 224 divided by 16. I'll save you the suspense there. And the long division is equal to 14. All right. But in order to solve this problem, in order to model it algebraically, we had to understand what the fundamental geometric fact was that was governing the problem, and that was the fact that these two angles are supplementary. They must add up to 180 degrees. All right, we're going to get a lot more work with this, especially in the next unit where we revisit parallel lines. Let's wrap up this lesson. All right, so what did we do today? Well, we reviewed the idea that corresponding angles that are formed by parallel lines have equal measures. Past that, we learned a lot of terminology, interior, exterior, same side, alternate side, and we looked at the relationships, specifically angles that are formed on the alternate side of, parallel of the transversal, made by parallel lines, end up having equal measures, and those on the same side end up having measures that add up to 180. In other words, those same side angle pairs are supplementary. Okay. I'd like to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.